my name is Bayo Lion Adedeji. Um, I am the um, founder of um, Tutu Nation. Dundun Nation is beyond hot, sweet tasting snacks. It is more than just affordable food sold on the street. This business embodies pride in Nigeria, the unique taste of our locally grown food, and a job opportunity for hundreds of people. With an MBA in the bag and an idea in mind, Bio Adideji got cooking. So tell me, what inspired the name Dundun Nation? So Dundu means fried yam. Dundu just means fried yam. Dundu is a Yoruba word for fried yam. So we named it Fried Yam Nation. It's a fried yam nation, but we do more than fried yam, which is amazing. We sell, we sell agari and moi moi. We sell cocoa and kose, that is akara and ugi, right? We sell bread and akara. We sell risky burger for, for people that know what risky burger is. We sell um, yeah, egg, we sell dangerous burger. That's moi moi and bread. We sell akara and bread. We sell egg and bread, right? We take the meshai concept and we replicate it, right? And we, we've taken the Friday woman's concept, and replicated it, and we continue to open more, 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 more brand on that one, which is amazing for us. So 300, we give you plantain 150, that's um, 450. And we give you sauce 100 now, 550. Mommy, yam. Yeah, people, give me more yam, more yam. Buy your soy business opportunity in one of Nigeria's most abundant staple food and a delicacy most Nigerians enjoy. And he decided to do an old thing in a new way by reinventing how street food business is done. We have taken street vending. We've taken street vending and taken it to a new le level. Right, where we made it more modernized, we've made it clean. You can look at my staff behind, you know, they're well dressed, they're properly trained, they wash their hands before they touch the food. But basically, we are able to keep street pricing right for more hygienic food, and we deliver. We have, our bikes are going to show up here now, so I, our customer service team is taking orders right now, you know, and that's what all our locations do, and that's how we drive the business. After a failed shoe retail business, Bayer discovered he had to take more than loans to start up a new one. He needed to take risks as well, and in 2016, Dundun Nation was born in a small caravan in Teju Osho, Lagos. So what were those mistakes you made when you were starting up? The first location cost us so much because we made a lot of mistakes. I remember paying the welder 500000 to build the container that I wanted to use, and the guy never came back. Like, the guy built something, they scrap, and we lost the money. Um, we had to pay so much for space because we didn't know what we were doing. I think we spent about two million naira. Um, I took out a loan. I took out a personal loan from a friend. Um, I borrowed 500,000 from family. I borrowed 100,000 from this. I put it together as a loan and, and I paid them back over a couple of months because we had to go work, we had to do other things. But in the first year of the business, we recovered our investment. And that's why we knew that we were onto something. From that one caravan, Dundun Nation now has 25 locations across Nigeria and employs over 150 people. So tell me how this growth process has been for you so far. We opened this year with four locations. Four. Four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. In Lagos. We're in Tejosho, we're in Yaba, we're in Oshodi, and we're in Oba. Now, in Lagos, we have 15. I'll, I'll try to see if I can remember everyone. We have, I have, we have Lekki in Maya Maya Center. We have VI in Federal, Federal Radio. Um, we have Balogun, CMS. We are inside Balogun by Martin Street now. And we have Suleri. Suleri, I didn't know Ogusoya, 34, I didn't know Ogusoya, rocking it. We have um, Abulioja, right by University Avenue, beside next salon, right? That is how many am I now? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I've lost you too. So that's five. Um, we have Abulioja. We, um, we have four that we own in Yaba, Tejosho, Oshodi, and Ogba. That is nine, right? Um, we have um, Ogudu. We have Ketu. We have Akunwajo. We have, um, I'm missing a couple now. We have um, Akunwajo. We have Egbeda, right? So we have Bagala. I cannot forget. We have Ikeja. I cannot forget my people, right? And you can see we, we continue to grow, like, yeah. And I'm sure I'm missing a couple. Like, we have locations, like, we have a mobile app where we take orders. We launched that this year. In Abuja, we have three operating locations in Abuja. Maitama, Wusetu, and um, one more. And Guarimpa, right? Right now, by the end of next month, we're going to have six. We're not going to be in Kubwa. We're going to be in Utako. We're going to be in Guagualada. That is amazing. We are in Ilori. We're in Ibadan. This week, we opened two locations in Ibadan. Amazing. 
like amazing Olu Yoli Estate and New Bodija now opened operate. I've not even seen them we've gotten to the point where I have not physically seen all our locations right I have to now go there I'm actually going to leave here and go to Ibadan to go see our locations in Ibadan I just came from Abuja last night right we're in Lori we're in Port Harcourt we're in Bini we're in Wari we are, we are, we're trying to expand we're going to Cote d'Ivoire we're going to Ivory Coast we're going to um, Ghana we're going to London like that's amazing for a company like I said you asked me about my background first I don't have parents my parents are dead and for me to be able to build that business and be the leader of that business is amazing. I'm a regular guy that went to IFE. I had risky burger half of my life when I was in college. So for me to now own a business like that is amazing. And that's the possibility of Nigeria. This exponential growth in just two years wasn't magic. Dundun Nation thrives on synergy with other business-minded food lovers through franchising. Our business is now franchised. A lot of our locations the company only owns four locations, this is one of them, um, that operate, but the rest are franchise. The franchise model helps us to get capital for multiple individuals that are interested in getting into business with us and help us scale the business. We have to then become creative to grow our business, which is amazing for us. I visited one of the franchises in Surulere, Lagos to see for myself. Naomi Sidahomi owns this branch. The pharmacy graduate and University of Lagos alumna says Dundun Nation was a launch pad for her to get into food business as she always wanted. I found out about Dundun Nation on Instagram through a sponsored ad that Mr. Bayo posted in 2017. He arranged a meeting for future franchises to meet. So we went for the meeting, we were just laid back, my mom and I, and then listen to the propositions and the budget and all that and all that and we thought it's a good idea and we decided to venture into it but we always actually wanted to do food i always actually wanted to do food so i think franchising was like a stepping stone because i feel okay they are laid down rules and regulations they are set procedures um standard operating procedures so it's a lot easier than Venturing, yeah, starting from scratch. I really didn't know what to focus on. If it was okay, I want to do gourmet food or street food or that kind of thing. So, the donation was a type of footing that I could start with. Naomi opened this outlet in May 2018 and now has four staff. She represents several other entrepreneurs in Dundu Nation who are turning food to fortune. So how would you qualify the impact of Dundu Nation and job creation in Nigeria? Our locations individually hire three to four people. Including the owner, you have five. If you multiply that five by 25, that's 125. Plus by 50, that's 175 people that now have jobs because we decide to modernize Friday. Give me Dundu Nation back up paper. Dunation backup paper. Dunation backup paper. Dunation backup paper. People, you continue to serve. I need one person. All right. Thank you. All right. Put that there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Take care of you. All right. Can you give me a little more plantain here? A little more plantain. Yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. Start. You to start attending to people. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Okay. I watched how you serve customers. I mean, it's very admirable. You speak to them politely. You even call some back and serve them extras. So is this one of the reasons why you say people keep coming back to patronize you? They pay me. They pay me. They bring money to me to pay me. They are my boss. They are everybody in Dudu Nation's boss. We care about the customer. If you complain about getting a meal, we will send you a new one. If you come to us and we know you, we'll call you by your name. That is the customer service that we plan to build, and that's the company that we plan to build. A company that works, that thinks about the customer as being king. So, what's your advice to aspiring entrepreneurs, people who want to, people who look at your business, admire your model, admire what you're doing, and we want to do something similar? What would you advise them to do? Be patient and, and be willing to start small and grow from that small. I, I told you about the story of our first container. And now we expanded to the second container, to the third one, to the fourth one. Now we're on a ton more, right? It's, it's that patience of, of growth and being able to fall forward. You make a mistake, you just make sure that every mistake you make, you fall forward. So you are always leaping forward each time and you're getting better.
In a country where 3.7 million children are severely malnourished, the Nun Nation has drawn up an ambitious plan to feed 50,000 mouths per day and 500,000 in the next five years. They already own yam plantations to achieve this goal. At this expansion rate, one would not be surprised if Dundun Nation is competing with the likes of McDonald's in the nearest future, serving local African dishes and exporting it to the world.